If you've converted your printer to Clipper firmware, you're probably looking for an interface to control it. Today we're going to explore three and a half options for doing just that. This video is the latest in a series where I'm trying to demystify converting your 3D printer to Clipper firmware. Previously, I made two sister videos on the main install, structured the same so you can switch between the two. One covered a Delta with a 32-bit mainboard and used Octoprint as the web UI. The other a Cartesian Bedslinger with an 8-bit mainboard, BL Touch, and Fluid as the web UI. Whatever your setup, Clipper adds web control to the printer. But this video is about adding a control interface to the actual printer. We've got three and a half options to cover, so we'll start with the half. Option 0.5 is to run the machine headless. After converting both of these machines, the existing touchscreen interfaces were both useless. So our first option is to simply say goodbye to them, unplugging them so they're blank and just not having an interface on the printer. It's kind of hard to know what to show here because going headless means you don't actually have anything on the printer. So we'll just move on. The proper option one is to recycle an old phone or tablet as your touch display. Maybe you're someone that has an old phone or tablet sitting around doing absolutely nothing. If you're able to design and print a custom mount for it, it can be a great interface for your machine. If you're running Fluid or Mainsail, simply enter the printer's IP address in the browser and you'll have a full featured display. And if you're running Octoprint as your web UI, you'll find a number of free apps available, including this one called OctoApp, which is linked in the description. Clearly this won't apply to everyone, but if you do have an old phone or tablet gathering dust, it is a free and effective solution for adding a powerful interface to your Clipper setup. This option requires the least amount of setup and is potentially free if you have a device sitting around. But what if instead you want to reuse your existing printer LCD? Option 2 is free in many cases and it involves retaining your original LCD. Although touchscreens are starting to become more popular on new 3D printers, the LCD and click knob combination has been the interface of choice on 3D printers for many years now. Clipper is compatible with a range of these, be it the shorter ones as used on Prusa or the taller full graphic rep wrap displays, including the Creality single ribbon cable version. You can even use a Big Tree Tech TFT35, but only in the LCD emulator mode, as the Big Tree Tech touch mode won't be compatible. These displays are typically connected to the main board with a grey ribbon cable into expansion ports. So the first thing we need to do is add to our printer configuration the pins for those ports. In the Clipper configs on GitHub, you'll find basic configurations for a number of different main boards. On the Super Racer, I'm using a Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3. So all I had to do was scroll to the relevant section, copy all of the pins and then paste them into my own config. Let's say instead you had a Rambo board. We simply open that file and copy and paste the pins from there. If your board isn't listed, your actual printer might be listed instead. For instance, an Ender 3 has an example configuration and the whole display section is already there with the correct pins to copy and paste. Now that our expansion pins are mapped, we come to the sample LCD configuration file and we scroll down, reading the labels of the available options until we match our particular display. In my case, I'm recycling a Creality full graphics display. I'm not interested in the beeper, but for the rest, I simply copy and paste it in right next to my board pins. Save the configuration to restart the firmware and you'll hopefully find that you now have a Clipper interface on your LCD. What you're seeing here is the default options with controls for Octoprint to resume or stop printing, manual controls for the printer, including homing and moving individual axes, and temperature and filament menus, which will allow you to control the nozzle, the bed, and the extruder for loading and unloading filament. There's also a setup menu down the bottom with handy options such as PID tuning. That's the baseline setup, but how do we add custom menus and commands? I wanted to be able to start and finish prints from the LCD. And to achieve that, I added the virtual SD card section in my printer config and set the path to the default Octoprint folder. You should now find in the main menu an SD card option. In here, all of the files that you've uploaded to your web interface will be available to start printing. So what about if we want to add our own custom menus and items? In the Clipper config reference, there is a menu section that guides you through doing this. 
The other reference that I've linked is the default menu configuration file. By viewing this, you can see how the config needs to be structured to create the default menu, and you can use that as a guide for adding your own items. To add a custom menu, we come back to our printer configuration file. The command we need is menu, and then we reference our menu structure by putting a double underscore in front of the menu names. We can see Clipper already has a menu setup called main. So by including menu, main, and then my custom entry, I ensure that it's gonna go inside the main menu. Let's say I instead wanted it to be inside the tune menu. I would simply copy that, add it in the middle, and then my custom menu will appear under main and then tune. To tell Clipper this is a menu, we tell it the type is a list, and whatever we put after name will be what actually displays on the LCD. That will give us our custom menu, so now let's add something to it. To do this, I've added to my configuration another menu command. I followed the same structure, telling it it's in main, custom, and then I've called this one message. The term we put inside the square brackets is for the internal clipper reference, whereas whatever we put next to name is what will actually appear in the menu. Instead of the type being a list, the type is now a command, and the only other thing we need is to enter the G code we want it to run. In this case, I'm using M117, which displays messages to the LCD, and I put the message in as a message. So let's save and restart the firmware, and then enter our custom menu, where we can see our command is there, labeled do something, as we entered. We can press to run the command, and when we return to the status screen, our message is on display. You can substitute in whatever G code you want here, whether it be regular or a macro. Here I've updated my menu item to instead test probe accuracy. It appears in the same place as before inside my custom menu. It's got my updated label, and when I press the button, my sequence runs as intended. One more link I put in the description is to the commands templates reference. It covers examples of how to use variables, and it also covers things like menu styling. Before we move on, if you're like me, you'll need to find a way to mount the LCD. As a basis, I was keen to use this controller case by Modi Nozzle. I then saw there was a remix to suit the particular Creality LCD, and after printing this, I hot glued in a piece of metal, and that's because the standard touchscreen was on this magnetic mount. I thought it would be good to reuse this system, but the cable plus the weight stopped it from sitting properly. So instead, I printed this little cradle, which is bulky, but gives similar functionality. Let's continue on to our third and final option. The last option, and my favorite of those I've tested, is a touchscreen running the Clipper Screen software. Clipper Screen is going to give us a touchscreen interface, but with some Clipper-friendly additions, such as macros and the ability to shut down or restart the Raspberry Pi. Clipper Screen has a GitHub page, and that links through to all of the documentation. The first thing we need to discuss is hardware. Many touchscreens are compatible, and if we click through to the forum, we have a list of touchscreens that are verified to work and I didn't pick any of them. Instead going for this Hyperpixel 4, with the attraction for me being that it sat on top of the Pi like a hat, and also that the size matched the original Creality touchscreen. The Hyperpixel 4 has a GitHub, but there's a more complete set of instructions on a Pimeroni tutorial page that will take us through the physical and software side of the setup. The Hyperpixel comes in a very attractive box, and inside this premium packaging, we'll find the actual screen as well as the required mounting hardware. As previously mentioned, this screen sits on top of the Pi like a hat, so we put in the extension, then screw in the standoffs, followed by plugging in the Raspberry Pi. It's important to protect the screen by putting it flat on something like cardboard. We finish up by inserting four screws to hold everything together. We can now power up the Pi, wait for it to boot, and open up PuTTY. The installation is predominantly done by a single script, so we copy it from the browser and then right click in PuTTY to paste before hitting enter. This will download the required software and will be prompted with questions along the way. The main one to get right is what model Raspberry Pi you're using as well as the type of screen. Here you're seeing me pick option one, but I later found out it's better to pick option two for experimental touch fix. A little while later, the script completed and I hit yes to reboot the Pi. As the Pi restarted, the screen came to life but it also got stuck on a login prompt. Now we're back on the Clipper screen documentation and we're gonna copy and paste into PuTTY to run the Raspberry Pi config. We want to select system options, boot auto login, and then the option for console auto login 
automatically logged in as Pi user. We can exit the menu, go to finish, and then we'll be prompted to reboot, which we'll accept. The next part of the instructions take us through installing Clipper, which we've already done. So we'll move straight on to copying these lines into our Moonraker configuration. In Fluid, this will be listed under Configuration Files, and we're going to edit it, adding in the trusted client of 127.0.0.1. We then copy the Update Manager section from the web page, come to the bottom of the file, paste it in, and then save and restart. After the Pi has finished rebooting, we're going to return to our instructions and copy and paste the lines one at a time to install Clipper Screen. Remember that to paste from the clipboard in PuTTY, we simply need to right click on the screen. The final line is the actual install script and you'll need to wait several minutes for this to complete. I actually had an error the first time I ran the script, but when I repeated it and rebooted the Pi, Clipper screen was installed and working, albeit in portrait instead of landscape and without any touch functionality. At this point, the Clipper screen software is actually installed and working. So we just need to tweak the hyperpixel settings to get everything 100%. For rotating the screen, all of the directions on the GitHub actually just threw errors. But after a lot of searching in the issue section, I found a thread where Gadgetoid was my hero. To fix rotation on a Pi 4B, we need to edit a file with PuTTY. We'll enter sudo nano and then copy the address slash boot slash config.txt. At the bottom of this file under Pi 4 and all, we need to comment out two lines by adding a hash at the start, and that is any lines with DT overlay equals VC4 and so forth. After this, Control X to exit, pressing Y to save if prompted. With this Pi 4B fix applied, we can now return to the instructions on the front page of the GitHub, coming down to the section called Persisting Rotation. Once again in PuTTY, we'll enter sudo nano and then copy in the address. All I've done is copy in this passage of text with the lower part rotating the screen and the upper part rotating the touchscreen input. Again, Control X to exit, Y to save if prompted, and then we reboot the Pi. That part was definitely a bit of a hassle, but in my opinion, the result is well worth it. I would describe Clipper screen as fully featured with all of the usual controls you would expect for homing, controlling heaters, and this includes both large buttons as well as the ability to input specific numbers, we have manual controls for moving the printer around, extruding and controlling the fan, a proper terminal including a full keyboard so we can manually enter commands as we see fit, a configuration page with options for bed leveling as well as a range of customizable settings for clipper screen and I love the fact it has an automatic screensaver where you can control the timeout. On the main screen we have a handy shortcut to access our macros and one of my favorite parts is a system section where we can update the firmware and restart or shut down the Pi without returning to our computer. Of course, we also have controls for selecting and starting prints. The final piece in this puzzle is the physical installation, which in my case turned out way better than I expected. After removing the Creality touchscreen, I measured everything up and came up with this adapter bracket to hold the Raspberry Pi and new Hyperpixel screen, leaving some room for the ports and I designed in some oversized holes to give a little bit of play so the touchscreen could be properly aligned to the frame after the adapter had been bolted in place. To power the Pi, I cut up a USB-C cable and wired it into a buck converter and I also experimented with connecting the Pi to the mainboard directly and a shout out to Manu7 IRL for helping me with this and explaining why it wasn't possible without the Pi GPIO pins. To get around this, I created this weird adapter to rotate the mainboard 90 degrees and tilt it out of the way. And with the help of this janky fan adapter, I was able to package everything inside the casing of the CR10 Max, no external wires, and clip a screen as if it was supposed to be there from factory. Just quickly, if you do want to retain your standard Creality touchscreen, Desu has a fork of Clipper, as well as firmware for the touchscreen, and this is linked in the description. If you're planning a Clipper install, hopefully you've now got more of an idea of some of the printer interfaces available. If you're already running Clipper, let me know which option you prefer or perhaps something I haven't covered here. Coming up in this series are macros, pressure advance and input shaping tuning. So until then, thank you so much for watching and happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.